Hot damn! I've had this project that's been hanging over my head for over 18 months that I committed to and I promised you all I'd do it and I finally got around to it and I nailed it and it works perfectly and it feels so good! Well, it all started with this. This was my original assembly turntable. This was designed to have a PCB on it and I could load up the components inside all of these different tray sections. Some of them I've got labelled and I could rest my hand nice and comfortably around the outside and I could pick up a component and I could place it and I could turn it around to get to different components and I could turn it around to get to the correct place on the PCB. This worked really well. It was a little bit light, moved around a little bit. Sometimes that was good because I could shift over to, to reach over if I needed to but sometimes it was bad because I'd knock it and parts would move around. The tray sections weren't very deep and sometimes I'd have issues with parts jumping across, especially if I turned it too fast. The biggest issue with this was all the components had to be loaded onto the tray sections each time I was going to assemble a board. And to be honest, it's quicker for me to assemble a board than it is to load out all of the components, especially when I have to be careful unloading them, when I'm unloading 0402 components that have no markings on them and you can't tell what they are so if you put them into a section and they jump into another section, two different caps, well, you basically have to throw all of them out and go and grab new ones or sit there painstakingly with a DMM trying to measure the components to work out what they are. And when you do that with O402 components, they often fly across the room. So this was great for a little while, but I needed something that allowed me to load the components in and store the components this way so I could come back to it at another time and all the components would still be there for me. So I decided to make this. This is my manual pick and place component storage turntable, whatever you want to call it. So this has a whole bunch of components that are in here and they're inside and they're on a tray that can spin around. I have access to them at this point here right now there's a little lock in here, so it won't move around. It's great when you're storing it on the shelf, but I can take the little lock out and I can now spin the components around. I can get access them to them via this front little thing here. So I can grab one of these little MOSFETs if I need to and place it. And I've still got my turntable on the top for my board and the turntable spins independently of the bottom. So unlike my first design where if I wanted to spin the board around to get to a component, I'd have to then spin the board back to be able to place the component. I can keep these independent. And this worked quite well. I mean, I've built hundreds and hundreds of boards using this. But overall, it's a little bit of a flawed design. It wasn't exactly what I wanted to build, but it was all I could build with the bearings I had on hand at the time. Because both the top and the bottom spin independently and they're both using bearings, I had to lift this top section quite high. As you can see, I could get my finger underneath this. Now what that means is it's not very comfortable to work from the side here because of how high it is. And so I often have to rest my hand on the edge over here to be able to comfortably place components. And I'm constantly taking my hand on and off and putting it back onto this edge. And I get a bit of a red mark on my hand. Poor me, that's okay but it also meant that it was a little unstable, as you can see. And just overall, the construction of this was quite difficult. There were a lot of separate parts that in hindsight could have been designed differently. This top section, when I take it off, you can see it's a bearing on the bottom, which is fine. That sits into this section here. I've put some Velcro or once the soft side of some Velcro tape there. Let's not even discuss friction and ESD. That's to slow down how fast the turntable can turn. That was then locked into my laser cut top to hold this still. Because as you can see, I've got the same bearing underneath and they had to be separate. And then the acrylic section is taped on that was always my intent because I wanted the ability to take the top section off to be able to stick new labels on if I wanted new labels on there. I don't need to take the top off to get parts in and out. I'll show you that in a moment. But to be able to put labels in, I do. And 
the bottom section, the base, I can't flip this over right now to show you, is separate to the sides. So there's also tape that goes underneath holding it all together. And this is held really well. I've, I mean, if the tape's curling back a little bit here, but I've never had a problem with this. I've never spilt it. It's never come apart. It's been put on and off my shelf three, four hundred times. It's been pushed around my desk. You know, I'll, I'll often shove it like this out of the way. Parts don't fly out. It's really good. I have occasionally dropped some parts onto the inside, as you'll see there. Most of the time that is when I am loading them in with my tweezers instead of using my little funnel, which I'll show you in a moment. But look, this worked, but it just was really, really difficult to put together. And so many people ask me for the design files for this. Every time I do a, a build video where I was showing, you know, uh, building a new revision of my Tiny Pico, more people were asking me about where they could find this file for this turntable than about the actual Tiny Pico. So clearly there was a demand for this. But it was just, it's a terrible construction to put out in the world for other people to replicate. I wasn't ever comfortable doing it. It had too many deficiencies with it. I'll quickly show you how I load components. There's a little funnel. And so I can just go to my LDOs, for instance, put the funnel into the place, which locks it in place. And then I can empty components in there and it goes into the funnel and into the compartment. I could just load them in with tweezers by hand if I wanted to, or try to get them in this way without the funnel, but that often leads to the parts bouncing and going out. So this has worked really well. It has, but it's time to reinvent it, to come up with my V2, well, I guess technically it's my V3 now, and make it reproducible by other people. Okay, so let's look at all the pieces. We've got a new base. We've got a new component compartment area. We have a new assembly tray. We have some new acrylic. And the paper's not taken off yet. We have our funnel and our lock, some rubber for the turntable, and the most important parts, two different size bearings. So let's have a look and see how it all fits together. The base is now one piece with the sides. So that eliminates assembly of this section, which simplifies things a lot. Now, on my particular version here, I've got a little standoff that I have printed, a little spacer, but the version that's online has that included as part of the base 3D print, so you won't see a spacer, you'll just see an actual one-piece print there. The component compartment has an area for the large bearing. Now, it just gets pushed into place. You don't need a hammer or anything. What you want to do is get it in so it doesn't fall out and then just push down and make sure that it's flat. Okay, it's really important that it's nice and flat so it doesn't spin on an angle. Okay, nice and flush there. And that now just fits onto the top, just like this. And look at that. No touching parts. Beautiful. Took me quite a lot of attempts to get perfect alignment like this. Okay, so that's nice and easy. The next step is we need to get our acrylic and put that on. I've been waiting to do this for ages. Let's move this out of the way. Peeling paper off acrylic is awesome. Now, not everyone's got access to a laser cutter. I'm aware of that. So I have not only supplied the DXF of this for laser cutting, but I've supplied a 3D print SDL as well. If you can't get access to a laser cutter to get some acrylic cut, you can just 3D print yourself the top. It just means that you won't be able to get a transparent top on your print. There's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. But if you can get access to a laser cutter, or maybe even just send the file off to get an online service to cut it for you, definitely worthwhile having a clear top so you can see inside and see what your components are. I'm going to try to not get my fingers all over this acrylic, but you know, I don't like my chances. Oh, I'm almost done. Yay! So there's my acrylic top. Now this is still designed the same way my previous one was. 
there's a section over here where there's no side. That's where you're supposed to use your thumbs or your fingers to rotate from. That's where this opening goes, right in the middle. There are little overhangs here on the acrylic that fit into some slots around. And there is actually a little ridge around the inside of the case to make sure that you can't push the acrylic all the way through. Right, it's really steady there, but this is not locked in place. If you turn this over, this will fall apart. My plan is to still keep putting tape on. I'll probably put clear tape on this time. You can glue it, that's why I've got the ridge there. But obviously, once you've glued it together, you can't get inside to stick labels on. Now, I did make sure that the acrylic top in this case is long enough that if you want to, you could actually stick a label on, like I've got my labels right now on my old one. Just slide it in for a moment. You could stick the labels on this way here without having to take the top off. If I can find a way of doing that, if that works out for me as well, I'll glue this top on. But until then, I'll probably just tape it down. So, so far, this is the same as what we had before, except really, really, really nice rotating action. Can't tell you how pleasing that is. It's awesome. All right? Now, we've got the top. Now, this top has been printed this way on the printer with a lot of support on the bottom. And it's not the nicest finish on the bottom, but you never see it. It's fine. Got the small bearing, it goes into here. Once again, we just push it into place. Turn it over, make sure it's straight. And that now just slides into the, the top. Like that. Look at that. Woo! Independent spinning. And the gap here is about two and a half millimeters compared to being able to stick my finger underneath it before. So I can now rest my hand on the side again, not over here, and pick and play stuff. I've also increased how big this is compared to my previous version. So if I turn that over, you can see that the actual area is bigger. I've kept the component storage area a, a fraction bigger, and then the rest of it is the inside. So I can place a larger board inside that area if I want to. And I can just place a panel in here as well. It doesn't have to be a board that's inside the rubber area. It can overhang, it's fine. As long as I can get to my components over here, the board can be as big as I need. Now I've got some rubber. I would just put some double-sided tape down to stick that down. I do include an STL for the cutout area for this rubber. Some people might put rubber down. Some people have put silicon, liquid silicon that dries inside here. I've left a hole here because that way I can get it out, push the bearing out again if I ever need to, to get it off. But if you want to put silicon in here and let that set and use that as a surface instead of this rubber, then you could always just go and modify this piece and close up that hole. So the rubber would go there and of course, got a newly designed locking piece that fits in with this because it's a different size. Locks it in place and a newly designed get that out, funnel for placing components. That's it, this is the new design. Less pieces, beautiful snug fit, no friction, nice and easy to print and assemble. The files for this are available on my GitHub. There's a link in the description. It's got a link to all the STLs and the DXF for the laser cutting. I've got information online about how to print the different pieces, whether you need supports or not, what type of supports, what type of infill you should use, what type of layer heights and everything else. This is all printed with PLA. If you're uncomfortable printing this with PLA, there are plenty of other filaments you can use. There's a form of filament that's it's kind of like ABS. It's some type of polycarbonate, I believe, that has uh, really, really good anti-static characteristics. I don't know a particular brand of it, but 
If you do know, maybe post in the comments what you could use to print this with. But as I said, this has been printed in PLA. I'm comfortable doing that. I only build prototypes with this. It's not for anything production. I don't see why you also couldn't send all of these files over to somewhere like 3D Hubs or some type of service and get them to manufacture it for you in whatever filament you wanted to. I am not selling this as a product. The print time overall on this is about 30 plus hours plus everything else involved. So I'll not be selling them. If you want one, you're going to have to download the files and make one yourself. That's why I made the files available. I know it's taken a really long time to get this out to you all, but I have, and I am a thousand percent happier releasing this to you all than my previous version. This is what I always wanted my previous version to be. So I'm really looking forward to using this in my future projects and videos. And I hope that you'll all find this useful for your own assembly work. And uh, if you do, if you make one and you're using it, please let me know, leave a comment, Join my Discord, there's a link in the description below and post pictures of your version of it. Let other people know about it. I'm really proud that I got it done. I'm super sorry it took me so long, but I got there in the end. If you find it useful, please let me know. Please also consider helping me out by buying one of my products on one of my stores or backing me on Patreon, uh, link in the description below. Thank you for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't already and if you already are a subscriber. Awesome to have you here. Thanks to all my patrons. You're fantastic. I really appreciate all of your generosity and all of your support and help. And until next time, catch you later. Bye.